I'm Owen Bigland. This is the Inside Edge video blog. I continue to see comments in various places like the Vancouver Sun and the Globe and Mail and on my YouTube channel here as well that we'll be talking about real estate and, and the gains that we've had in real estate in Vancouver real estate over the last 20 years or they'll talk about stocks like Apple or Amazon or Netflix or even Tesla uh, recently. And you always get this cadre of people that will always say, yeah, these guys were lucky. They're always lucky. They, they timed it and they got lucky on their investment. And I get it all the time. People will say, oh, and you know, you've you know, been in real estate for 30, 30 plus years. Sure, you were buying properties. My first one bedroom condo I ever bought in Richmond off number three road, I still own it today. I paid something like $52,000 for it. You know, it's worth about 400 now. But I got lucky on that. You bought it when real estate was cheap, and and uh, you know what they don't go on to say though is really the secret was is that I held that those properties and my stocks through a lot of crazy ups and downs and massive sell-offs. I also hold held my real estate through interest rates in double digits, 11, 13, 14 percent interest rates. But they never talk about that. So this blog. I'm going to keep it short and sweet here and I've done lots of blogs on this but it's Saturday so let's let's keep this one light. We're going to call this one how to get lucky in an, as an investor whether that's real estate or saving for your retirement. And here's the secret, it's pretty simple. You just buy quality assets whether that's let's call it a Vancouver detached home in Renfrew or Grandview or wherever, Fraser maybe one with a couple of rental suites down, a couple of mortgage helpers. You buy it, live in it, enjoy it, rent the suites out, rent the laneway house out and keep it for 20 or 25 years. And it will guarantee you become very lucky, as they call it. You're going to make fist loads of money, multi-million dollar capital gains if you, do, if you were to do that today. If you're an investor and want to, uh, after you've maxed out your RRSPs and your TFSAs, and you've got your principal residence, because remember, I always recommend an investment property is the third step for people. So you've got those things maxed out and taken care of and you wanna diversify a bit, then call me up, we'll get you a good quality one bedroom condo in downtown Vancouver for 650, 700K. We'll put a tenant in it, keep the, co the, the, the unit up, keep good quality tenants in it. You're gonna have some tenancy turnover throughout the years keep it for 20 years, 25 years, let the tenant pay off everything and then have a look at it. And again, you're going to be very lucky. You got lucky again. The condo you paid 650 for today, 25 years from now is worth 2.5. That's all there is to this. Buy quality assets, real estate, and just hold them. And it's the exact same thing in saving for retirement. I tell people, your first $250,000 should just go into indexed investing. Buy the index. I would say buy the XIC, the, K, uh, the TSX, and then I would put half your money into the S&P 500 or a stock, uh, uh, ETF like VIG, Vanguard Dividend Appreciation Fund. I'm pretty bullish on U.S. equities. I think people should have at least half their retirement funds in U.S. equities. The other half you can put in Canadian. Just buy it, tuck it away, continue to reinvest the dividends you're going to get on that quarterly, continue to put more money in every year, top it up with your TFSA and your RSP contribution, and just hold it. After you got 250 in there, if you want, and you've got an interest in this type of thing, you can start to buy some individual stocks like an Apple or a Visa or a Costco or a TD Bank or a Royal Bank or an Enbridge or whatever. Good, high quality, large cap, dividend paying and dividend growing equities and then just do nothing. Monitor them because as Warren Buffett says, even every now and again, a fantastic company can get into trouble. It's rare. Usually it's temporary. I've had many companies over the years that are I've all held for t over 20 years, companies like McDonald's and uh, some of the banks and, and uh, Constellation Brands and Estee Lauder and McCormick you know, that have had some choppy waters along the way. They lose a CEO, they run into some bad times, but they recover. The good companies tend to do that. And just hang on to it. That's your secret to getting lucky. Buy quality assets, don't over leverage yourself, and just keep them for long periods of time. It's, as I've said many, many times here, it's the only 
real advantage that the individual investor has. You're not smarter than these, these Wall Street traders and these hedge funds and, and private equity guys. They've got a huge leg up on you. And even them, you know, they can only beat the index about 55% of the time. So don't play that game. The only advantage you have is just to buy and hold. And that's all there is to this. That's how I became, you know, a multimillionaire by the time I was in my late 30s, early 40s. I didn't do anything special. I just worked hard, saved 20% of what I earned and got it working for me in real estate and equities. But it's not going to be a clear path to success. There's going to be downturns along the way if you want to get lucky 30 years from now. You're going to have some, some periods there where you're going to feel unlucky. If you bought my book, I talk about 08, 09 and the crash in the stock market where I lost over a million dollars on paper. My portfolio dropped over a million dollars. That felt like I was unlucky at that time, but I didn't do anything. I didn't sell any equities. As a matter of fact, I was buying whatever I could with any dry powder I had and reinvesting the dividends as soon as I got them into more shares, topping up my McDonald's and my Home Depot and my Royal Bank and Apple. You know, there's going to be corrections along the way. Jeez, I, I just had well over a half million dollar on paper, doesn't mean anything, drop in my stock portfolio back in March and April. I tweeted all about it in my timeline and go on there and take a look at what I was doing during those dark days. Buying is what, whatever I could because the actual underlying value of my portfolio, stock portfolio, means very little to me. I, I expect to have massive sell-offs like that. They should be expected every year or two and the big one every seven or eight years. But I've, as I talk about in my book and I blogged about, I concentrate on what my portfolio, the easier way to stay the course is what your portfolio is producing for you as far as income every year in the form of dividends. And if you read my book, I could have comfortably retired eight years ago and just lived off the cash flows that my stock portfolio and my real estate portfolio is producing for me very comfortably. You know, I've only had a couple of companies here that have suspended their dividend and it's temporary during this COVID lockdown here. So it's par for the course, but buy and hold, you're going to have corrections along the way. Keep it for 25, 30, 40 years and you are going to become like these guys. You're going to be one of these ones that claims you're lucky, like me. I guess I was lucky. It had nothing to do with me working 12, 13, 14 hour days saving 20% when I earn, not panicking when my portfolio went down a million dollars in 08, not panicking when my portfolio dropped a half mil here back in March or April. I was just lucky for all through all that stuff. Buying real estate throughout the years when people told me that you're crazy to be buying real estate. Why would you buy now? I still remember my first detached home when I bought it and how everyone thought I was nuts to be paying $400,000 for a detached home. People thought I was crazy 10 years ago, 11 years ago, paying $299 for a one bedroom with parking in the Gastown, Crosstown area. Now look at where it's at. But there's been corrections along the way. It's never going to be smooth sailing up if you want to get lucky. You just got to stay the course, but you've got to buy the right stuff. Buy the right type of real estate. Don't buy a dog unit hugging up on a bridge or buy into a strata that's got a bunch, bunch of issues coming up. Buy the right unit. Same thing with equities. Just index invest, as I say, for most people. That'll cover everything you need. Just buy the, a low-cost ETF through index or, or through Vanguard or iShares. And just stay the course. If you're worried about the short-term volatility and all this fluctuation that goes on in real estate stocks, just ignore it. Don't pay attention to it. Don't open up your statements. I've got a friend in New York that has over a $10 million portfolio, individual investor. His portfolio generates $250,000, $300,000 in dividends for him every year. He says he doesn't even look at his portfolio. Once a year, twice a year, that's it. He could care less. He's living off his dividends. He's semi-retired. He draws out the dividends. 
surefire way to never run out of money in retirement. And that's the way I've structured my portfolio. I bully, bulletproofed it. You know, there's the old analogy, you, you, you know, the 2% rule where you withdraw 2%. And that's fine. You can do that. I want to bulletproof mine where I don't have to sell off anything if I don't want to. You want to have it where your cash flows, your dividends, and your rent checks are enough to live off without having to sell anything. That's when you're really living. But the surefire way to get lucky, buy quality assets, hold them for long periods of time. Don't tune out all the noise. It's crazy some of the stuff I see from this mainstream media people that don't have two dimes to rub together, these people. They don't. There's no transparency with any of these people. They're negative on everything. We're all gonna die. Just tune it out. Focus on you, focus on getting better. Come up with a plan, buy, hold, and just stick with it. Enjoy your life. It's simple. I'm Owen Bigland, as always. Thanks to all my new YouTube subscribers. Those numbers are going up pretty dramatically here. I'm closing in on 1 million YouTube views now and something like 5,600, 5,700 subscribers. Thank you very much for subscribing. I'll see you next week.